Back at the Weston family mansion, Diana sat quietly in the living room with a cup of tea in her hand. Her expression was neutral, but everyone could feel her anger. After arriving at the house, Madison told Zach to go back home. Even though she was still young, she understood how she had to handle this. She knew that she had married into a powerful family and couldn't hide from this issue. Her brother might want to protect her from everything, but this was something she had to handle on her own. After following Olivia and Edward inside, Madison felt strangely calm. However, when she moved forward to take a seat on the couch, Diana stopped her. No, stay there. You can sit when this is resolved, she instructed. Shocked, Madison looked back at the older woman as if she hadn't heard her correctly. Ian's parents acted as if they hadn't heard her and went to sit down. Ian stood beside his wife with a frown, but he didn't speak up yet. Grandma, why can't I sit down? Madison finally questioned, her legs trembling and her voice tired. Even after everything she had been through, she wasn't going to follow orders for no reason, without even asking questions. If Diana thinks I'm going to just do whatever she says, she has a rough surprise coming, she thought. She hadn't done anything wrong, and she wasn't going to be pushed around. Diana slammed her teacup down on the side table and stood up, causing everyone to jump, and tea to splash everywhere. Madison even took a slight step back. Out of everyone in the family, Diana was the one who intimidated her the most. Why? The older woman sneered. Madison's face paled a little, but she kept her chin raised as Diana continued. You owe us an apology, that's why. You didn't take the reputation of this family into account at all last night. You didn't have the self-awareness to act like a proper wife and fitting member of this family, and you've embarrassed us all. Is that enough of reason why? The matriarch stormed over and glared at her granddaughter-in-law with her eyes narrowed into slits and a furious expression on her face. Grandma, Ian tried to speak but was swiftly interrupted by his grandmother. Hush, I wasn't talking to you. She snapped before turning back to her target. Madison stared at her in disbelief, unsure how to respond to the bizarre situation. How is this my fault? Claire and Lynn came after me, not the other way around, she wondered. The living room fell into a strange silence. Madison and Diana stood a few feet apart, staring each other down. Neither of them wanted to admit defeat. Madison had to repress a laugh at the ridiculousness of the situation. While she understood that the older woman was angry, she didn't understand why that anger was being targeted at her. After all, her reputation and the reputation of her new family were always on her mind. The first thing she had worried about when a potentially scandalous situation had started was how it would reflect on the Weston family. She was constantly anxious about acting appropriately for her new status. The idea that she had acted without care was ludicrous. If I hadn't cared about how my actions affected this family, I would have gone after Lynn the moment she opened her mouth. I probably would have struck her first, to be honest. But I didn't, because I do actually know how my actions affect everyone here, she thought. The Weston family was very well known, even outside of their social circles. The media loved to swarm families like theirs, but so far, they had managed to maintain their reputations while staying out of the spotlight. Madison understood that she needed to avoid the attention of reporters, and if some incident did happen, she needed to downplay it as much as possible. For that reason, she had barely fought back initially when Claire and Lynn had come after her. She had gone through so much to stay out of the spotlight, and now it felt like it had been for nothing. She stood there silently, her eyes filling with tears that she stubbornly refused to let fall. The look on her face made Ian's heart ache. He wanted to protect her, but Diana didn't care about that at all. He had no idea how to help her in this situation. Diana took a deep, angry breath and insisted, Madison, apologize for your behavior now. The young woman shook her head and responded, No. I didn't do anything wrong. What exactly do I need to apologize for? Her heart was pounding angrily in her chest as she fumed about the treatment she was receiving. She was the victim in this situation, not the aggressor. 
After everything she had suffered at the police station, she had hoped that she would find some comfort here, even if she had been nervous about talking to the family. This was worse than she had expected. Why are you angry at me? This wasn't my fault. Diana rolled her eyes and shook her head in irritation. I'm giving you one last warning. You're going to stand here until you apologize. I'm the head of this family, and you'll do as I say, she snarled. Finally, Ian took a step forward and interjected. Grandma, can we speak in the kitchen? His grandmother didn't respond and kept staring Madison down. Grandma, Ian yelled, causing Diana to finally turn to him. With a heavy sigh, she turned on her heel and walked to the kitchen. Ian's parents hesitantly got up and followed to try and mitigate the argument they were sure was coming. Olivia shot Madison an apologetic look as she left. Madison was left standing in the living room by herself, miserably going over her predicament in her head. She lowered her head into her hands and thought, What am I supposed to do? If I give in now, it'll set a precedent for the rest of my life. I don't want the Westons to think I'm a doormat. This is so insane. I'm not even sure if it's okay to sit down. If I do and then Diana comes back and sees me, what will happen? In the kitchen, Ian was about to start defending Madison, but was stopped when Diana spoke first. Do you remember that girl you used to talk to about five years ago? Ian blinked in surprise at the sudden topic change. Five years previously, Ian had been good friends with a woman his age. They had been so close that his family had thought they might end up getting married. After three years of talking, however, their friendship had ended rather suddenly, and Ian hadn't spoken to her since. Confused, he narrowed his eyes and asked, What does she have to do with anything? Diana shrugged and didn't reply. Annoyed at his grandmother's unapologetic and baffling actions, Ian huffed and walked outside to take a breath. Clearly, she didn't think her behavior was up for discussion, and he didn't want to risk losing his temper by staying. Olivia and Edward muttered between themselves for a minute before following their son out. They hoped they could convince him to follow his grandmother's lead. A few minutes after she had left, Diana walked back into the living room, where Madison was standing in the same spot. Have you thought about where you went wrong? she asked, her voice deceptively gentle. Madison had racked her brain to figure out what she could have done differently, but she was still at a loss. She was far too stubborn to ask for clarification, so she insisted, I didn't do anything wrong. Diana huffed in annoyance and condescendingly explained, You have married into the Weston family, but you still went to such a disgraceful place that you ended up getting into a fight, which was then broadcast all over the Internet. You've humiliated this family. How do you still think that you've done nothing wrong? You acted like an ordinary, classless woman last night. Madison listened diligently, but Diana's voice was starting to sound like it was farther away. Blinking rapidly to clear her vision, she focused on what the family matriarch was saying to her. You have to remember your identity. You are a Weston now, so you're no longer the version of Madison who can be easily intimidated. Everything you do, every word you say, represents the Weston family, not the Greenwald family. That's not who you are anymore, Diana reprimanded. Diana paused to make sure her words were sinking in before continuing. A proper Weston would have made the other people present treat them with respect. If you carry yourself the way you should, no one will try to harass you. They'll respectfully defer to you instead. If you don't master that attitude quickly, this kind of situation will happen again and again. Soon, instead of our family name commanding respect, everyone will think we're easy to push around do you understand that? After her grandmother-in-law finished, Madison stubbornly raised her chin and answered, Grandma, I understand what you're saying, but I still don't think I did anything wrong. I don't know what I could have done differently. I can't control other people, no matter how intimidating I learn to be. With that, Diana's face closed off, and she turned away in disappointment. All right. Since you're obviously choosing to be stubborn about this, I think you should stand there and keep thinking about what you've done. Maybe you'll be ready to apologize soon.
Then she turned around and stormed back into the kitchen. Alone in the living room once again, Madison sighed and was about to rest her head in her hands again when suddenly she felt the room started to spin. She took a stumbling step toward the couch, but before she could reach it, her vision went black. <laughs>